he started to shout to throw uh, uh, contains of water and like 15 to 20 contains fell on me i felt them felt on my head on my they fell on on my body on around me i uh, i could i barely could move my 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 hand but i i was able to reach one of the contains and and to drink a little water and uh, and then i started i sat there and i was staring at the lights in a big confusion and didn't know where i am and i was disconnected from reality but then i started to hear the voice of, of the, the officer from over the fence uh, asking me hey a uh, child uh, what, what what is your name what is your name uh, come come we'll take you home don't worry and then i started to pull myself uh, uh, toward the fence and and he was encouraging me pull yourself don't worry we'll take you home uh, don't stop don't stop and then till I, I i i was able to hold the fence and shake the fan and then i i, I started to come to reality uh, i was listening to the uh, to the radio uh, rutavo all the commands over the radio um and uh, and then they started to cut the fans they didn't have the, the exactly the the uh, appropriate equipment on their jeeps but they started with their with their weapon they were able to pull to cut the fans and to pull me um through three different kind of fans into the uh to the air force base uh, the uh, the paramedic was taking care of of me and 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 um was um basically uh um helping me with uh looking where where i have blood on my body and 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 taking care of it and then they start to investigate me we were on the jeep whereas we were like 10 jeeps driving along the fan and i realized that it was very very long way i couldn't imagine myself running through such a long way but anyways they started to investigate me and i couldn't really respond well and the officer told them don't worry living 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 along is is okay he's okay he speak hebrew and 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 uh, and that's okay uh we'll investigate him afterward he's not in a condition okay so i was not in a condition and then i fent probably and when i woke up i was on a stretch on the ground with uh an iv in my hand uh i couldn't see uh the jeeps or officers or soldiers i was by the gate of the air force base i saw only one soldier probably the the garden that uh, uh, taking the 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 all the uh papers from 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 a car that entering to the air force base and uh giving him giving him a permission to enter and then when he saw me moving on the stretch that was on the ground far from the road then he came to me and he asked if I, me if everything is okay it was it was before still dark before sun sunrise and it was i it was in the middle of the desert and i and i was very i was shaking from it was very cold i was shaking in the stretch and, and i told him it's very cold in here he told me well i have a blanket but it's very dirty blanket we put uh, the blanket on the ground here uh, there is no floor so we put it on the on the sand and and i don't know how long it's here probably a few months and he started to shake the blanket so all the all the dust will will leave it well just uh, and, and then he put the blanket on me and i with all the thickness and the ugliness i i was i was probably i was on the stretch for um until uh, sunrise till the morning and then i was able to wake up but leave that story that i told you now as a child and just go back now to my story as an officer that was commanding the mission in gaza strip and getting a reward from the air force from the 
from uh, from the Air Force, um, flying with my with my uh, commander F-16 pilot in the back seat of a combat airplane, landing in the Air Force base, emergency landing and realizing realizing that here down there by this fan i was here already it was like almost eight years before i now recall at once because my the red helmet on my head remind me the head, red helmet of a combat air pilot from my childhood that woke me up right here down there and i realized that i'm getting a present or reward from the air force for the mission that i've done in gaza strip but i actually got already my life as a present right here down here in the fence and i and i was pretty i was very impressed how they were able to pull me from up north from the army i was the only one that was removed from Golani. And I was removed not to any other place in the army or any other place in the military, but to the Air Force and especially to specifically to that Air Force base. There is many. And no, 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 I'm the only one that commanded the mission in Gaza getting now the reward on a place where down there I, I got already my life. I <clears throat> realized that Ashgaha, the Ashgaha are giving me signs because I smell the smoke. I felt that I don't have oxygen to breathe. I felt that like if I'm burning life, like somebody is symbolizing life to me, I'm burning a very, very pr precious time. And the red helmet is like, red helmet, think, think. Al Rosh Haganav Boerakova, we say in Hebrew. Uh, uh, you have a red helmet, think. It's burning. It's, 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 uh, you got to, to understand the Ashgoche, that you're not here for no purpose. It's, there is, life have a meaning. It's like if the universe are oh, just giving me signs, uh, signs that I'm, I'm getting now a present from the Air Force, but I got my life right here down there from God. We were able to land. The land was not perfect, but because it was very hot and very... Uh, in there in the cockpit and we didn't have an oxygen and, and we smelled burning rubber very very uh, I would say very uh, um, strong uh, smell of a rubber burning but we were able finally to, to land and I didn't want to get no more a present from the Air Force I just I felt like I got my life again back to me and i don't want to leave the mother ground and that's okay i prefer to have two feet on the ground rather than a neshama or a soul in heaven uh, I, I don't love present okay and, and, and as somebody that hate present will leave that's what i figured to myself i'm not i don't, I don't want i don't want the present of the air force and but it was not my, my decision to make. They took me um, from a very strong strong uh, uh, mechanic, took me and he pulled me to a new airplane and, and it was against my will. I didn't want to get the present of the Air Force, but all of a sudden the present become uh, 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 a command and I had to fly again on a better airplane i don't know another new airplane that we um a combat airplane and we flew over gaza again i i'm not telling you that story i'm realizing that actually 
Bashgacha was giving me many, many, many signs. For example, when I was in the middle of the desert and I shouted Shema Yisrael, it took exactly 20 minutes uh, as I, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes after the Shema Yisrael to wake up and to see the light beams. Not of, uh, I, I wasn't in a near-death experience. No, no, I, I never felt near-death near experience. It was the light beam of the jeeps of Tzahal in the middle of the desert. I, I was saved. I was all day and all the night in the desert. And only when I shouted Shema Israel, that's where a miracle took place. And I realized that. I was, by the way, when, when, when I realized that when I was at the age of 23 and a half, it's actually I was not keeping Torah mitzvot. I was not even interested in, in those Indians and their clothing. I mean, I'm talking about the Haredim and their clothing. It seems to me like if they're Indians, I don't know why they're wearing such a black clothing and what they're doing. But anyways, and I was not even keeping kosher back then. But I realized that there is a power up above uh, 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 that, that, that actually were here. He heard me and somebody remind me the event many, many years after. And I realized that it's out of statistic because it's impossible. It's very, very, very tough to be accepted to the Air Force. It was 50 other so, uh, officers that came and, and through the interview to the Air Force base and 12 was accepted. I was one of them. And only one from those 12, 12 got the mission in Gaza Strip. So I realized that it's out of statistic that that one, which is me, that commanded in Gaza, will have such a miracle over the fence of the Air Force, reminding him that he got his life right here underneath. Usually while I was running, uh, doing a journey with my soldier, I chose a place, the place where the fans were cut and where the soldiers enter me to the Air Force base. And that's where I used to tell my soldiers to give them a break and to pull out or the or their weight from their back and to give them a, a break to drink some water and usually even putting a uh, sweet in their in their in their mouth so they're going to wake up in, you know in the middle of the night while they're making 45 kilometer uh, journey or or 35 kilometer journey and we, I used to choose that place as a break because I had a mercy on them, realizing that I have to have mercy on others at that place where I, the soldiers had a mercy on me and gave me water. And, and I always was asking myself whether it's a coincidence that I'm here or it's an ashgacha that I'm here. But actually, it was like a winkel, like turning on and off, on and off. No, 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 it's possible that way, it's possible that way. I'm, I'm questioning myself whether I'm, it's impossible otherwise. But I realize, basically, I realize that it's, if you really think about it, that it's out of statistic. I, when I recruit from the service, and I'm sort of a long service and, and the, in the in the military and then in the air force as a, as a soldier as an officer um my mother already got married she got married with a businessman in, in tel aviv that have uh, many restaurants there he was a very rich person but he was a widow and my my mother was a widow and they got married uh, now we become a very complex family. I had uh, two other sisters, uh, staff sisters, and and uh, and a, a step brother uh, that was about to get married with a 
Australian Gentile, very far away from keeping Torah mitzvot. And um, all of a sudden something happened. And his father, my, my stepfather, father, died. And uh, then when he was sitting Shiva on his father, and he was listening to his friends, what they have to say about his own father, which he didn't keep in touch for many, many years, then he realized that his father was a very righteous person uh, and well appreciated. And then he, he accepted on himself one thing for the first year to say once, at least once a day, Kaddish on his father. So he started to, to say Kaddish on his father. And he started to be more uh, religious and to keep a little more. And he heard uh, uh, a lecture from Rabbi Shimshon Pincus, Zecher uh, Tzadik Livracha, in Ofakim, in his Kehila, in Kiviti Hashem. And he got... Uh, a little more closer, and he started to keep Shabbat. And in the beginning, it was a big, big fight between between my stepfather and my mother that didn't want to, that have a hard feeling toward God because my father died at a very young age, and and she was um, she become a very, very secular. Uh, a, a person didn't want to keep no Shabbat, no Kiddush, but then with her husband, uh, then she started to keep a little more after afterward. And the Rabbanit Pincus also uh, used to come and to visit my 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 mother, and and she she started to encourage her to put. Uh, um, a, a cover on her head uh, while she's turning, uh, turning on the Shabbat, the candles, and and slowly and surely the family become very, very observant, very uh, uh, religious, and and even his son that was about to get married with a, a Gentile woman, uh, he was able to convince him that it's a wrong way, and he started to make a tshuva. And and he start and and he made a tshuva, and then he got married in a shidduch, with a very um, uh, <laughs> um, um, religious, uh, very orthodox uh, uh, woman. And now he lives in Tzfat. He have seven kids, uh, orthodox family, Haredic family, and he was able. My stepfather was able to convince his to to my step step sisters to. To make a tshuva, and they made a tshuva. I was the only one in the house that was an officer, very proud of myself, coming to visit uh, um, my mother and and the family. And during Friday night, all my friends used to uh, used to uh, beat me uh, to uh, leave the. Uh, the um, uh, the dinner in in uh, Yom Shishi at, at uh, uh, Yom Shishi at night to go uh, to go uh, to a pubs or a bars with them were all officers and 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 friends from the army or air force and so my stepfather told me look it's Shabbat if you're not sitting with us. Don't come no more. I didn't get married with you. I got married with your mother. And uh, you're a very adult person. Live your life. Go on. Don't destroy what I built here. I, I made a tshuva with the family. You're very far away from religion, from faith. Uh, so live your life. And so I didn't come no more house to, to the house come the more to the, to visit my mother and uh, I become much more anti because and even in Yom Kippur I didn't keep no more even Shabbat I didn't want to didn't want to think about no kosher and and other mitzvot because I had a hard feeling with my 
my stepfather, we didn't get along together. When I finished to serve in the military, I told my mother that I'm living to the States. And then I landed in New York. And basically, that's where uh, my my little story started. I, I'm going to make it a little more shorter so you can understand what I'm talking about. I came to New York. It was, the year was 89. And I become very, very secular Israeli. That thinking about money, business, nothing was important to me. I wasn't sure that there is a, a definition to life. I lost it. While I was drinking beer, I thought to myself, there is only beer, and you can drown into the beer and at least enjoy the moment. No more. There is no other things. People are talking, talking a lot. Who says that there is a definition to life? I was not even sure. Uh, but always something was I was re- when I when I was remembering what I've went through in the in the in the in the arm in the Air Force, then I was remembering the event of what happened to me, and that was a contradiction to all my theology back then, and it created a conflict inside me. I was saying that there is no def- definition to life because it was very comfortable for me. I could um, feel free. It was a necessity to feel free and to have no definition to life because then you can do whatever you want. But something else was in the back of my mind that contradict all what I, what I wanted to believe. And it was what happened to me in the military. I realized that there is an Ashgaha and I'm actually lying to myself. And I was living the contradiction back and forth. Didn't know what to decide. And I told myself, okay, you know what? Maybe there is a definition to life. But uh, an infinitive definition. Maybe there is a supreme power up there. Okay, but I'm too Jew. I'm too Jew. If I'm going to start with my journey, I obviously am going to end it up in Israel, dancing Moshe Emet Veto Emet. But actually, it's something that was, that was, I, 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 I was born in such an environment that maybe in my subconscious, I so observed it that I probably cannot release it even if I'll find the truth somewhere else. Or maybe that's what my subconscious will guide me back to Judaism. And it's a sold case. If I would have been Christian, and I would have been raised in a Christian environment, so maybe, who knows, but maybe, if I was a secular Christian, and I was going on a journey for 10 years around the world, searching for the truth, I'm pretty sure that my subconscious will guide me back to Georgia to tell my mother, hey, I found the truth. I found Yeshu. So I I was not sure whether I'm able to, to overcome reality and I really have a freedom of choice. So I first of all thought to myself, okay, let's first avoid all or reject what I got and then cross all the borders and then maybe after being objective and not having an emotion toward Shabbat, Chalot, Kiddush, then I might be objectivity object uh, objective and i will maybe then be able to to really think clear and 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 find the truth but i went very far and i got married and i got married with a dutch woman catholic christian 
was married for seven and a half years. And unfortunately, it leads me to have a business in you know, Armani, Versace, fashion. And then I went on. I was able to purchase an airplane, Cessna 172. And then I become a flight instructor in Florida uh, with uh, six different kind of licenses. And I realized that I was drowning and drowning into the materialistic world. And the Western civilization was able to, to cause me to forget the search, the search of the spirit. And um, I think that one day I woke up realizing that I have no Shabbat and no Kippur and no Kosher and I'm celebrating Thanksgiving and Halloween and Christmas, realizing that I'm married with a Gentile woman, realizing that I was lying to my family, realizing that I was not telling the truth to my mother and to my brothers and sisters that didn't know that I got married at all. Realizing that I was not alone, but actually there was many, many other Israelis that was going through the same process, like their own families. And I basically was able to realize a national tragedy because I was, I was after converting to Christianity at the age of 30, realizing that I was that I become very anti-Semitic because I become a believer of a book, a New Testament, which is, let's face it, and let's say it clear, it's an anti-Semitic book. And you become a believer of an anti-Semitic book, then you reject all your inheritance and your connection and you become hungry and mad with your people and with the Jewish nation, and you start to think bad things about them. And unfortunately, that's my story, but it's not only a personal story. It's a national tragedy because the assimilation, it's probably the most hurting, uh, the most hurting, uh, thing, uh, I'd, I'd say, uh, um, th that hurting the, our, our, our national survivor, survival, uh, uh, um, and, and, and basically nowadays, if you, if you think about it, then there is a lot of people since the Second World War, since 1946 till now, which is almost 70 years, that assimilated uh, to not necessarily because they, they, they believe in Christianity, but because of the materialistic life and because they fell in love or went through um, many, you know, of, uh, being disconnected with their own identity and or appreciate being unappreciating unappre the Jewish identity. They become um, very open-minded to another culture, and they went through an assimilation process, just like me. I even remember that one day I was in Main Street in Queens, and I went to Naomi Pizza. It was I don't know if it exists no more, but probably. I was told that it exists, but I, when I went there, it was like 19, uh, 1992, and I heard uh, a shout from behind me, a paramedic, paramedic, and I turned, I was a paramedic in, 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 uh, in uh, Unit 51 in Golani, when I turned to my back, and I saw a friend that, um, uh, that used to serve with me in 51 unit. And he hugged me. I couldn't re recall his name. 
so I called him by his, you know, by his uh, uh, pakal, what he was used to hold. He used to be a, 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 with a tummy gun. So, so I told him. So we 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 hugged each other, and he told me, "What are you doing here?" And I told him, "What do you mean? I live here." And he, and he told me that he lived here as well. And we we gave one another the phone numbers, and then we started to meet one another and he was with a gentile woman i was with a gentile woman and 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 basically when he got married then many of my friends from 51 unit section 3 uh we came to the marriage and and, and none of them were came with a jewish woman unfortunately i'd say Almost, what like if if the unit is thirty soldiers and half of it, like eighteen people came to the wedding and and none of well, maybe maybe a little less fifteen or maybe fourteen I don't really recall but they, they were all they were all married with Gentiles so and I realized that we as soldiers. We have a fight in in Israel over land with the Arabs. Hamas in the south, Hezbollah up north, but none of us uh, die in the combat uh, in Lebanon or in in Hamas in Gaza. We were able to survive it, but the problem was that there is another fight, not over a land. It's over the spirit, over the soul. It's a cultural fight that we were never trained for it. Nobody really gave gave us the tools how to be able to overcome and to fight uh, uh, such a, a combat. We are in the middle of a cultural fight. If we were not, if we were not gonna hold to our own identity then we're going to lose it. We're basically going to be defeated by our enemies, despite the fact that the military will be able to win all our enemies around, all the Arab, Arab countries that we are surrounded with. The problem is that whom, the question will be who defeated the war who who are we if we're going to lose our own identity then we are not exactly Jewish people we're not exactly Jewish people that defeated the war and we are maybe Druzim, Chalkesim maybe Russian, Gentile Russian and maybe Hever maybe we are Many, many, uh, uh, many, many uh, nations that came here, but not necessarily kept our own Jewish identity. And we can maybe take our luggages and search for a Jewish nation somewhere else. We have another fight. And that's what the Torah says. The Torah, when we open the Torah, the story of the Torah, then we can see that in Rebekah, Stomach was a fight between Jacob, not Jacob and and Ismail, but Jacob and Isa. Who is Isa? By the way, all the Makubalim have a consensus about it. Isa, it's Adam, the Adamite Adam. It's basically Christianity. That's what Don Yitzchak Abarbanel says in his book, Yeshuot uh, Mashicho. That's what Aramban says. That's Many, many other we shall name from our sources, Jewish sources, we know that the Adamite are basically Christian. Christian countries, Christian culture. That's the Adamite. Im Takbia Kanesher, Ben Kochavim Simki Necha, Misha Morid Chanel Mashem says the scripture in Ovadia. Meaning, if you're going to climb as an, as an eagle, then uh, and and you're gonna put your 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 place 
between the stars. From there, I will <clears throat> take you down. Say, uh, God says, uh, God says, and basically, the eagle it's represent the Edomite, represent Italia, represent Germany, represent America. That's the eagle Edomite, and we got to understand that we have a fight, culture fight, not only materialistic fight, culture fight, but also the heart of that culture, which is basically Christianity. It's Isa that looking for spirituality, and 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 Jacob, and it's not only. A secular world it's also a spiritual world Isa his head was buried in Merat HaMachpela he was searching also for spirituality so the fight is it's not between a secular uh, uh, life and, uh, and, and and a Jewish life no 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 it's between Oved and and, and and Jewish life also and that's from the from 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 the dawn of history, a fight between Jacob and Isa, and and it will go on, it will go on, till the dawn of 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 Vayavek Ishimo Adalot Who who is was struggling? Who who was Jacob struggling with? It's the angel of of Isa, till the. The, the sunrise of, of, of the redemption in the end of human history. There is a crossing, a war that's crossing through entire history between Jacob and Isa. That's why we say in the prayer, to judge Isa mountain. Then, then God will become a king. We don't say Velu Moshim Meharzion Lishpot at Mecca. We don't say Velu Moshim Meharzion Lishpot at at Ishmael. We do, we say Velu Moshim Meharzion Lishpot at Esav. Isa meaning that exactly the same culture that we live among in America, in Europe. Um, basically, it's the fight over the spirit, over the soul. Or the soul of the nation. That's exactly why the Gemara says in Perek Chelek in Sanhedrin that the Messiah is sitting at the gate of Rome. Why is it? Well, Peripol represent the church. He had an argument with a Ramban. It was 800 years ago. And Peripol was a Jew converted to Christianity basically. He was representing Christianity in the theological argument with the Ramban. And the Ramban had to had to to protect, but very carefully, not to insult, uh, to protect the Jewish community. And um when he was asked why the Messiah is sitting at the gate of Rome. He told uh, Peripol, because you are basically uh, uh, to, to destroy it, to destroy it. That's what he, 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 he told him. Why the Messiah is sitting behind the gate of Rome? To destroy it, not to destroy the Rome city. It's, it's just a represent, represent basically uh, Christianity. Uh, represent uh, the Vatican, represent uh, the culture of, of Christianity. Because uh, there is a, a big fight. There is many, many souls that the nation, the, the Jewish nation, lost during human history, especially to Christianity, especially to the Western civilization. Not many converted to Islam, but most of them through assimilation, maybe one or two generations after, became a Christian and got married in a church. And it, despite the fact 
that their inclination, first inclination, first intention, or first desire was not the religion, but the second and third generation, we, ha- we ought to admit, become Christian. So the bottom line important. The bottom line is, then that's, that's what the, the, the Gemara says in Masech al-Brachot. The Gemara says, if somebody will tell you that Rome and Jerusalem uh, being destroyed, don't believe it. If someone will tell you that Rome and Jerusalem are built, do not believe him. Because it's le'omi le'omi amats, ve'ravi avod tzair. When Rome is climbing up, Jerusalem are going down. When Jerusalem is climbing up, then Rome are going down. It's a fight. It's a cultural fight between the darkness and the lightness. And we're supposed to be a light to the nations to show them that they live in the real God of Israel that have no human body, no flesh, didn't manifest himself in the flesh just the way the paganic religion believe around the world. And then it doesn't really matter whether it's Christianity or Buddhism or any other religion. They all believe in a human God. We don't. That's what we uh, represent. We represent the, 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 the message of the real God of Israel. And basically, I realize that many, many, many Israelis that served for three years and even four or five years in the military, and they think, okay, they have done. They donated their share uh, uh, to the to the nation of Israel, but actually, they have children. They have different identity. They lost their identity in Netherlands, in Europe in many other countries, in America, and they don't even come to serve in the military afterward, and and even their children are disconnected from the Jewish identity because they got married with the Gentiles. And then the question is, what exactly is the real war about? Because they can donate five to six years but then three years in the military thinking that the fight, big fight, is with the Arabs over the land, not realizing that it's over the spirit, over the identity, over assimilation, and over being a Jew and donating his and dedicating his life and his other generation's life to the destiny and destination and, 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 and purpose of the Jewish nation uh, instead of just donating three years or four years and then living to find another place, to live another culture, to be part of. I was one of them. I was one of those people. And like I told you, I converted to Christianity at the age of 30. But that's not the end of my story. Nowadays, I'm a rabbi. I used to live, uh, to study in Jerusalem for 14 years uh, in a koilal in Harnoff. Study Torah to become a rabbi, and then another five years I was, st- I was studying to become a dayan. I'm, I didn't and the studying, and I didn't become yet a Dayan, but I was in the process of studying to become a Dayan. Back to my identity. I sold my airplane. I, I, I gave up the dreams of, of being accepted to NASA and um, having, having dreams to maybe one day... Uh, be part of a big research in NASA or space or whatever. I I left my life in America. I got divorced and I came back to Israel. But it was years after. My story is going on and on. I will go on with my story 
before entering the theolo theological uh, issues, like I told you, like I promised you. But I think that uh, for this uh, radio program, uh, we're going to do a break here and uh, go on with the story. Just remember where we stopped. We stopped where I basically, at the age of 30, converted to Christianity and then started to go to a church with my wife, uh, to ch a church to pray and and. Again, I will tell you exactly, exactly what Zahash Gacha have made. Why am I here and why am I here with seven kids studying in a, in, in, in a Talmud uh, um, I'm married with a, now in, in Jerusalem with an Orthodox, really very righteous Jewish woman and, and living my life according to the Halacha as a Jewish life, the Ashgacha turned, turned me uh, in, in a many ways to recognize that I made the biggest mistake ever, that I betrayed my nation, I betrayed uh, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, David, Shlomo, the entire nation of Israel. The fathers of Israel and the Torah and God, and I was searching water in the wrong places. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm just gonna add one thing. My sister got married here in Israel. My only sister from my own father and mother, because um, I had, I have only one sister. Uh, from my own father and uh, she got married with a priest that converted to Judaism and he was born in 1964 and I was born in 1964 and actually he was born in October and I was born in October and he was searching just like me he left Mexico he started to search he was studying religion around the world and he become he came to a conclusion that Judaism is the right religion Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu and Rabbi Ram Shapira converted him Haredic conversion he became a Haredic and he became a lecturer in Arachim movement in the seminars and I can just tell you one thing we have done the opposite thing. Two souls was born at the same year and at the same month. One of them in Mexico and the other one here in Israel. And basically we have done the opposite thing. I converted Christianity. He converted Judaism. I was trying to, to preach the gospel and I become a missionary in Florida unfortunately and he become a rabbi uh, trying to reach out for Judaism and something will take place something will happen between us that will guide me back will guide me back to see the truth in Judaism and I will tell you about it in our next radio program I I thank you for listening for that radio program in Galei Yerushalayim. I just want to remind you, my name is Daniel So. I'm delivering the program from Jerusalem. It's morning at my time. It's uh, Motzi Shabbos, your time. And Be'ezrat Hashem will go on with our radio program next week. And your Motsi Shabbos. And uh, have a good night or a good morning. Uh, and uh, we'll meet again next week. Thank you very much. And have a nice night. <laughs>